Hi, it's a quick little fun note. Uh, my, my daughter, who works at a uh, local daycare center, had uh, some uh, some of her charges over today. A little boy, um, Silas, about uh, just about to turn three, and his older sister, who was probably about five, uh, they were over here and uh, brought them down to the layout. And you can see it's all kind of disheveled now. Um, things are pretty much everywhere. And it pretty much turned into uh, locomotive races. Um, we were running trains forward, backward, as fast as possible. Um, just FYI, it turns out the Wabash unit is the clear winner in the speed category, um, at least compared to some of the other <laughs> locomotives that were racing, including the UP engine. And let's see, we ran, oh yeah, the BNSF, you got in some racing. You can see all the uh, containers got moved around, they were getting banged around. By the two-year-old. Here's one of the race com competitors. That was pretty much at the very end. They were running uh, an engine in an auto rack and seeing how fast we can go forward and reverse. Um, the little guy had up and he was bounding around and he actually broke uh, the coupler off this little car, which is okay. It's an old uh, German passenger car. I kind of let him have at. Um, you can see we had the talent out. It, it was racing around at uh, breakneck speed. We had the intermodal cars running. They're over here because they got bored with that and took them off the tracks. Uh, they wanted to play with the construction equipment, but I'm not going to let a two year old touch that. Uh, you can see we got some crashed helicopters and some trucks on the floor, so it was pretty chaotic. So, just a little note the, uh, the layout did okay. Um, oh, yeah, they found those trucks and we're seeing how far they could fling those around the layout. So that was uh, that was pretty interesting, and we also had races with the uh, with the little guys with the track mobile who's somewhere around here. I didn't have to take it away from the two-year-old, and these two were racing. Uh, by the way, the the yellow guy's faster than the uh, GE 44 toner, so I guess the 45 toner is faster than the 44 toner. Makes sense, right? Higher number. So, uh, so hey, it was fun. So just a little update that uh, the kids were over. Um, Put the layout through its paces and uh, it appeared to do okay. So now I gotta reset everything, calm my nerves down, uh, and get back to work. <laughs> All right, just a few quick things here, a couple uh, updates. Uh, not a lot of major work, but some stuff I got done. Um, showed you this before. This is the PSX1 uh, breaker that controls the branch line and back on the shelf. And all I did was uh, add a little buzzer to it. Um, if you see there, I'm not sure how well it'll show up, but uh, right up there is yeah, a little buzzer. They give you the DigiKey part number in the instructions. Um, however, I had just placed an order from DigiKey and already shipped it, so I was like, oh, rats. So I actually uh, found a substitute and I ordered it from uh, Jamico, and I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so there's the... Uh my other PS1 that I harvested from the old layout. I figured since I had uh, had the other one out, I was going to solder in. I went ahead and soldered that one in too. And there is the part that I got from Jamaco. You can see that three three five 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 seven. I ordered three of them. Also have one for the uh, PSX AR that I have as well. Didn't solder it in. I don't know why it says remove after washing. That's a little interesting, but. Uh, but it worked. I did. I compared the spec sheets of the Digi DigiKey uh, one referenced in the instructions with this particular one, and they were almost spot on, very similar. And it does work. And I also wired in the. I can show you this here. I wired in the my little uh, LED on the little tower there, and so I have the power on now. So I'm going to short this bad boy out. Let me try to make it a little bit darker here. Hey, well, I'm going to try this here. Make it a little bit dark. And you'll definitely hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and short this out. And we'll see what happens. There we go. Nice and loud. And get the LED to light. So now I have a visual and an audio alert when it's short. So that was a quick update. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what we did on some other electronics items. Yeah, just no, FYI, another little fun little thing I bought. Again, I told you I'm a sucker for these little gadgets. Uh, also at Jamico, I just saw this, so I picked it up. It's a little six LED 
light. Uh, you can see the specs there and the part number. Um, 87 lumens, 74 milliamps, and 12 volts. And I happen to have, like I said, 12 volts running around the layout. So that's pretty cool. So here's my little uh, 12 volt supply from the old layout. And uh, we'll go ahead and light this bad boy up so you can see. It's pretty nice. It's a pretty bright little dude. So I'm just going to light him up there. And you probably can see. I'm not sure how well this will capture. But that is how it... Uh, how it looks there so not not a bad amount of light again for somewhere under the layout maybe in a control cabinet or something like that um, not bad so again just FYI another little little tidbit for folks and uh, again here is the uh, the information on that Jamaco Electronics some fun you might want to consider for your model rarity and pleasure all right got some more electronics done here these are the first 12 of the DCCODs, and I got them all done. Uh, these were kits. I had them uh, assemble. I made them over the weekend on Sunday afternoon, pretty much. Um, after the two young kids left, if you saw the first part of the update, uh, so to kind of de-stress myself, I decided to sit down and do some soldering. So um, made these up. All turned out relatively well. The first one uh, that I did, um, I actually took out to the layout. And tested it per the instructions that you get in the uh, in the handbook because uh, I wanted to make sure that I had the this wound correctly. Um, I kind of cheated and uh, I did buy two of these already assembled from Slick Electronics uh, just because I wanted to get them up and get them in. And uh, I use those as, as references and uh, again just to verify that I actually got this wound right. So that's that's an extra one for the for the next batch of. <laughs> of 24 more I'm going to make. Uh, so for the first one, like I said, I took it out to the layout. I took one of these. I, I got one extra one in the kit. So thank Mark, thank you, Mark. Um, put that in there and then basically hooked it up uh, like it was in place in the layout and verified that the LED works. And then I made up this little um, test wire here, again, per the uh, uh, instructions in, in the handbook, uh, how to set it up and, and do it. So. So those are all done, and I also got three of the OD motherboards, ODMBs. So these are these all. Then will then just come in here and just boom. So that'll be the twelve. We'll go right there. So I want to get the first twelve done because I need them for the uh, the area that we're most of the peninsula area. Uh, so they got these all done as well, and these look really simple, but man, they took some time. Um, you got to solder on all those 440 nuts on the bottom, um, and then each of these obviously has, um, you know, five connections to solder. So looks simple, but it, it, it took a bit of time. Um, this is the SMC12 cards. Um, I have one complete with the four I need, uh, basically for Wallace Junction. Uh, then I cut it. Uh, these all do have all the hardware soldered on that I need. Um, and here's the next one. I need I need all this this entire board. Um, not done yet, but I do have all the, all the hardware uh, soldered on, so I just have to go back and do the the electronics, which again doesn't look like a lot, but it does take it does take time. Um, I don't claim to be the fastest worker when it comes to electronics. I want to take my time and do it right. Um, this board I did cut, uh, which is fine. If I say yeah, you can cut it for distribution on the layout. That's great, but when you cut it, you do lose your input uh, hardware connections. Because um, you see, you cut it, so there's no there's no holes there to put uh, that hardware in. So I'll have to go ahead and solder uh, to the back here, which is which is fine. Uh, but just one thing they don't necessarily tell you when they say, "Oh yeah, it's great, you can cut it and distribute around the layout." Yeah, that's true. But if you would cut this into you know smaller sections, you got a lot more work to do. Not a lot more work, but just some other considerations to get your uh, your 12 volts to it. Um, so those then are going to go. Obviously, the, the output of those. We'll connect to the S Mini. There's one of them. I did not solder that. That was uh, I bought that. You know, you, you gotta you gotta take, you know, make some compromises in life and uh, time versus money. And and I needed to uh, save the time. This will take me forever to do this. I have four of them. Um, so as you know, most folks know the computer comes in here. Uh, this thing goes to the next S Mini, and I have three other ones. And then from the uh, all the inputs, you know, the output of the block detectors becomes the input to the S-Mini, which is, you know, along this side. Uh, so I'll have to make those cables up, but that that's the way it reads the condition of the layout. 
and then he outputs this goes out to things such as the signals and uh, and whatnot to uh, to control the layout and stuff like that so that at least right now is what I'm planning to do I know some of the posters say this is uh, extremely old technology but uh, so is the internal combustion engine I don't see anyone giving up their cars so I'm, I'm gonna try it I'm not sure if I'll go with uh, uh, Visual Basic, which is the plan right now, or I am looking at uh, JMRI. Um, I think you know pretty much the hardware you need, uh, regardless of how you control it. Uh, a computer by itself can't do anything. Um, whatever software you have, unless you have you know something to read the block occupancy, uh, you know something to tell the, the turnouts what to do and whatnot. So I think again, I'm not not claiming to be an expert yet, but. Uh, Pretty much with this setup here, obviously I can get the, I have an old computer, I can use Visual Basic and do it, but I might also be able to control it with JMRI. I'm looking into that uh, to see, obviously JMRI being a little bit new, new and modern, probably more graphically, you know, Windows compared to DOS and that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not so uh, old school that I'm saying bring back the DOS prompt, but I really, I don't have a, an issue with uh, Visual Basic. I grew up with Basic, I can program in Basic, and I certainly can get through that. So, so we'll see. So, uh going to go ahead and get these installed and take them out to the layout and get them all tested. Alright, I'll attempt to show you this here. This is just how I went ahead and tested it. I actually went through and tested these. Um, it looks like I have one board I have to check. Um, so what I did was, okay, so they're all mounted now in the in the motherboard. Uh, the way they'll be in operation. Basically, I just brought in uh, 12 volts and ground. You can see there the the 12 volts in the ground and they're just right from the power supply it's not the prettiest but it works and then for the track common which basically is the call it the positive of your DCC bus I just went ahead and, and tapped that off the existing arrangement there because that's where my track comes in and that's the way those detectors are wired so I just brought that up and that basically simulates the uh, the input from the main bus and then off each of the detectors the red lead is the bus is you know this was what would run out to the track have all the feeders come out and feed that particular block so that that's the called the block itself the other clip is on the V out and again that's using the the test a uh, little test configuration that, that they recommend for you so that comes off the V out goes through an LED and a resistor and basically goes back to the 5 volt supply. Um, that's going to simulate basically the output of the card itself. And then the other end of the bus, all I'm doing is running off the, call it the negative, of the DCC feeder, which is, in my case, the, the, the inside rail. Uh, there's always that. So th that's the other end of the bus. So basically if a locomotive comes into the block, it draws current across here which would turn this to turn on uh, and show occupied so I did go through each of these and do an initial set because what you can do is with you adjust the trim pot up and then just back it off till the LED goes off this is hard to do with a camera and uh, okay so I did that for all of them um, except for this one right here which I think has a problem because I cannot get even with the, the pot turned all the way up I get no LED so I'm gonna have to pull that board out uh, and check it but then what you do what I did what I, what I did is um, I'm gonna occupy the block now this first one here what should happen is that LED should go on that LED should go on and then if I unoccupy the block that LED should go out immediately and that one should go out with about a three, three and a half second time delay. So, to occupy the block, again, this is the chicken finger test. You take your finger, lick it, and occupy the block. That goes on, that goes on. Now, if I unoccupy the block, okay, out immediately, time delay, that goes off. So, occupy the block, they both go on. There's a little bit of a delay. On the on that particular LED, supposed to be about three quarters of a second. Unoccupy the block. Board off immediately. Time delay that goes off. So I basically did that for all twelve of them. Um, don't know what's wrong with this particular card here. 
Again, that's the one I cannot get to even get the, the darn LED to turn on on the card itself. So, we will have to do some troubleshooting because all the other ones can do adjust it initially. You just gotta just tweak it and back it and then back it off a little bit. And then you just do the same thing. You move those wires down to each of the individual blocks, which I did, uh, and test it and get the, you know, that goes on, that goes on when you occupy the block with the chicken finger test, chicken wing test, and then you unoccupy it. This goes off immediately, and this goes off after a time delay. And they all worked except for that one particular one. So I guess I'll go back to the bench, pull that one out, and see what I can find on that particular card. So just thought I'd show folks this. I, I think this is the right way to do it. Can I follow the instructions here in the uh, in the in the book from uh, Mr. Chubb? How to do that, and uh, everything seemed to work okay, except for that one one board. So I go do some troubleshooting, um, and uh, in, in some point in the future, I'll uh, report back what it was. So that's all for the moment. All right, one quick thing I did uh, before I took it all down. I took that particular card out and moved it up to here to see if, you know, maybe it, it was the slot itself. Uh, and it turns out it's not. Because um, now with, with the other card in there, and we do our chicken wing test. See, it lights up. Lights up. Remove, delay, and off. Light up. Delay. And off. And this one uh, even doing that, moving it into that particular clay, it's still, um, I still can't even get it to to give me the indication just with the with the pot turned all the way up. So, looks like I definitely got to look at this particular card uh, and see what's going on because I can't get it to light. Where again, any of the other ones, once you adjust it to a certain level, you get that to go off. So, just want to do that again. Troubleshooting is always the the fun part, so to speak. Uh, but before I rip this all down, I wanted to verify it wasn't that slot itself. Uh, so I think I definitely do have a problem with that particular board. And at least to me, it indicates that probably the, uh, the motherboard itself is okay. So we'll see what happens next. More to follow. Okay, real quick update here. I think I found the problem. I took the board out, was looking around at it and checking the trim pot and make sure it was okay. And checking all the resistor values and all the diodes are in the right way and everything and I turn the board over and I get a good look at it and I'm like oh you gotta be kidding me I think <laughs> I didn't solder in the socket um, for the integrated circuit for the uh, uh, what is that that's the LM324N I don't know if you can see that how well it is so it's late I'm not gonna solder tonight I'm getting tired I'll do it tomorrow and then uh, I have a feeling that's probably probably the issue. So I uh, pulled the uh, integrated circuit back out, and I and I'll go back and I'll and I'll solder that up tomorrow, and then we'll see what happens, <laughs> oh, brother. But uh, like I said, usually it's something simple, and uh, I would think that that's probably it. Again, I don't know for certain. I checked everything else, so that's hard to focus. Sorry about that. Um, but without those uh, all soldered in there, that uh, might be the problem, as I'm hoping so. More to follow, guys. All right. Turns out that was indeed uh, the issue. There's the card right there. I soldered the, <laughs> the socket in like it's supposed to be. And now, again, doing our uh, chicken wing lick the finger test here. If I go ahead and boom. There it goes. It goes on, and that's on, and then if it goes off, immediately off, and then the delay, and there we go. So that was it. So uh, if, <laughs> if you're going to assemble these, make sure you do all your solder joints. Uh, so so there we go. So now we got uh, 12 good cards ready to go, so now I just got to get it all mounted up and uh, get it ready to be wired back to the S-Mini. So uh, that's it for now, but uh, we might have something interesting to post in the very near future. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching everybody.